I want to do a quick video on a very useful method that you might use in class-based views in Django, and that's the get context data method. And we're going to highlight this with a simple example here, and let's see how this works. Now before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page, we've got a link to that just below the video, and consider becoming a channel member if you're enjoying this content, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's get started here, what we have is a simple function-based view in Django called index. And this fetches all the questions that we have in the database and then adds them to the context alongside a set of numbers. And then it returns this template called index.html. Quite simple, but let's say we wanted to convert this to a generic list view in Django, returning a query set of all questions. Now this is similar to the code that we wrote in the official Django tutorial video. What we're going to do is rewrite that here and I want to show how you might get additional context such as this into the template so that it can be rendered and ultimately what we have in index.html is a template that loops over each question, it displays the question text and then also that random set of numbers that we're going to look at is also displayed so we want that to be in the context for a class based view as well. Let's go to the page. And this is what we see here, very simple, no frills web page, no styling whatsoever, but we want to see these numbers when we actually convert this to a class based view using the generic list view from Django. So let's get started. What we need to do is we need to write the class based view at the top here and we're going to call this index view as we did before and we're going to inherit from generic.list view, but that is a generic view that's provided by Django. And we're going to use this template so we can use the template name field on the class based view to provide that. And then we're also going to provide a query set here. And the query set is going to be question.objects.all. And we can now save this. Now I'm going to comment out the index view here. And we're going to go to urls.py inside of this project. And we're going to change this here to the index view. And whenever you refer to a class based view in Django, you need to call as view here in the URL configuration. Once we've done that, we can go back to the page and let's see if this is going to work. Let's refresh the page and we have a problem here. No polls are available and no numbers are available. So our attempt at converting this view here has completely failed. So what has went wrong here? Now in terms of the query set, we need to actually tell this particular template what is the context object name that represents this query set. At the moment, you can see inside the template, we're looping over a set of questions here. And the reason we see the paragraph tag here that says no polls are available is because we don't have any questions. So if we set the context object name, which is a field we saw in the last video, you can see we can set that to questions and hopefully that is now going to work. Now if we go back to the web page and refresh this, you can see we now get the questions appearing in the template. So all you need to do is you need to set the context object name if you want to refer to that query set here by a different name than the default. Now before we move on to adding numbers to the context, you might be wondering what is the default for the context object name, so let's comment this out. The default is basically the name of the model after we convert the model name to lowercase, and then after the name of the model, it's underscore list. So let's demonstrate that by going back to index.html. So it's questions, uh, question, sorry, underscore list is the name that we're expecting in the template by default, and we can look over that question list if we go back to the page here, let's refresh the page, and we still get the two objects here. So by default, what the generic list view is going to do is take the name of the model or the query set, and it's gonna convert it to lowercase, and then it's gonna add underscore list to refer to the name of that query set. That's the default, but you can of course override that using context object name. Now the key part of this video I want to look at is how to get these numbers into the context. So if you use a list view by default and just provide field names like this, it's only going to add that query set to the context. It's not going to add anything else unless you actually tell it somehow to add additional things to the context. And that's very common. You might want to display a list of objects, but you often have additional context that you also need to display. Now, generic list views have a very useful method, and indeed most Django class based views have this method. It's called get context data. And you can see the autocomplete here has filled this in a little bit, but what we can do is we can amend this and override it to add additional custom items to the context. So what we can do is get the default context by calling super.getContextData, and then to that context, which remember is a Python dictionary, we can add and remove keys as we wish. So I'm gonna add a context key here called numbers, and we're gonna map that to the list that we had before. So let's set it equal to this list of numbers, just a random list, but this could be anything useful from your database or other parts of your application. And then what you need to do is just return that amended context 
from the get context data method. So before we had these two questions appearing, but if we go to index.html, the section on numbers was not appearing because by default in the list view, we didn't have a context object called numbers. But now we've added this here. Let's now see if it's going to work. So we can go back to the page and let's refresh this page. And now we see the numbers because the, num the numbers are actually available in the context. So they are now displayed on the page. Obviously, this is a trivial example, but the idea here is that if you need to add custom context, just override the get context data method that's available on most class based views. And you can add your own custom context, whatever it may be, whatever you want to that particular view. Now we can comment this out just to demonstrate that it's not going to work if we remove the numbers and you can see we get the empty message. So that's how you add additional context in Django, override get context data if you have a class based view and provide that additional context and return it. And it's going to be then available in whatever template you've specified for that class based view. So that's been a short video on the get context data method available in class based views and generic views in Django. If you're interested in more of these short demonstrations, let me know in the comments. And if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's linked just below the video. And I'll add this to the Django tutorial playlist that is also available below the video. So thanks very much for watching, guys. If you have any suggestions, let me know and we'll see you soon in the next video.